Hi everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. A bitch is back talking about books. So today, I feel like you're gonna hate me for this one because what we're gonna be talking about today when it comes to books is the fine print and the second book called Terms and Conditions. Let's start with the fine print. I read this book in March, so almost two months ago. And I actually really, really liked the book. It didn't feel amazing for both of these books for this series so far. They don't give anything to me that is that would make it my favorite, that would make me super obsessed with these books. And that's just like kind of what I felt so far for like these, these two books, uh, The Fine Print and Terms and Conditions, is that I like them as books. They're just not giving obsessed, you know? Yeah, so for the fine print, it is a billionaire romance book, Grumpy Sunshine. It follows Rowan and Zara's relationship. So Rowan, basically, what this whole series follows is three billionaire, three billionaire brothers. And these brothers, their grandfather died recently, and in the will, grandfather is like a huge tycoon. Think of him as the Walt Disney of this world. He owns like a bunch of theme parks and amusement parks that are basically like the happiest place on earth. He has like a big conglomerate group. He's a billionaire, okay? So he's the Walt Disney of this world. So think of if Walt Disney had grandsons, these three brothers, billionaire brothers, would be considered the Walt Disney grandsons, okay? So the first book follows Rowan and it's called The Fine Print, and Rowan, for for the will, when the grandfather dies, it's, it's said in the will that the three brothers would inherit parts of the company if they did certain things. Like, there were conditions to getting whatever was on the will, basically becoming a billionaire, getting their like inheritance, you know? And for Rowan, he had to spend time at the Florida location of their amusement park, and the amusement park is called Dreamland, and kind of, I don't know, make it better? And with like better inventions and better creativity and things like that, and then once he like does this project there would be a committee that would vote if he's allowed to gain that inheritance so basically what rowan does in this first novel is he goes to the florida location of dreamland and basically like a D the disney world of dreamland and he, there he becomes like the ceo of that location and he meets sunshine because he's grumpy he meets the sunshine of Zara and Zara is this very like eccentric happy-go-lucky um, woman and she's very creative she is a worker at the theme park and has a lot of ideas for the theme park I think as characters both Rowan and Zara are very very good characters I loved Zara. I think she was so sweet. I could totally see why Rowan fell in love with her. She's so smart, so creative. From what I remember from this book, I really, really liked it. I think the only thing about it was that I just, there was nothing about it where I was like, oh my god, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with this book. I gave it a four out of five stars. It had a really, really cute banter. The progression of the relationship was nice and slow, and you saw the way that this relationship progressed. And the hero of Rowan was super, super spoonworthy, so props to that. I loved him. I thought he was so sweet. There was smut, and a lot of people say about the smut, like, oh, this is a, a smutty book. It's not. It's not. It's like the regular amount of smut in like a regular old romance book. You know what I mean? Like it's not like crazy like ooh it's like a dirty book. It's not. It's not really um, that smutty at all but I do think that it was a really really cute read. So that was the first book and then the second book just came out following Rowan's brother called Terms and Conditions and I just finished that a couple days ago and honestly I don't know if it's just me and this is what I feel like people are gonna hate me for this but I just really wasn't vibing that much with this book like it just didn't 
give everything that it was supposed to give I gave it a three out of five stars it wasn't bad but it wasn't good like it wasn't amazing but I didn't hate it at the same time I thought it was a an it was a, like an okay story. It was an average story. This second book follows Rowan. It's a marriage of convenience. He ends up being married, getting married to his assistant. And I think the reason why maybe I wasn't super like obsessed with this book is because it had so much potential. Like the potential of this, ooh, like the tropes that were used and everything, it was so like there was just so much potential so this second book follows Declan he is also a grumpy just like Rowan but he's worse like he's just kind of known in the company for being cruel and basically it's a marriage of convenience because what he has to do for the will um for his grandfather's will is he needs to get he needs to have a kid and the and once he has a kid then he'll like get the company and be like the CEO of the company company because he's the oldest of the three brothers so like he would have inherited the most basically had all the right parts there's the, the trope I hate everybody but you because he literally he hates everybody Declan he hates everybody except his assistant he, who he ends up marrying the characters were also very very good characters so Declan was a very realized character and so was Iris Iris she does have trouble reading because she has dyslexia so they kind of go through like her experience with that I just felt like I don't know with the marriage convenience maybe I, I just haven't really been feeling it so far with Marriage of Convenience books. Like, um, Electric Idols is a mar Marriage of Convenience, but I didn't really like it that much because they took way too long to get married. But anyways, I already talked about that book. But yeah, same thing with this book. I just felt like it had so much potential and it just didn't fully deliver. There weren't a lot of parts where I felt like like my, my butterflies were going. You know, I'm very much into the cliché cringy like rom-com-esque um situations but this didn't really have it or like he didn't do much actions to show how much he loved her until the very very end if that makes sense like there are some parts where it's like oh that's sweet that he did that but there wasn't really a lot of it he was sometimes kind of mean to her and i just wish that they showed more in declan's expressions that like he actually cared about iris but just didn't want to admit it to himself like I wish that they had they showed that internal conflict more because I feel like that is what it was lacking it was lacking the understanding of the character's internal conflicts like they didn't really show any of that sort of action and so basically what happened halfway through the book is that you know they're already married but they don't want to actually be together you know but they have that attraction towards each other one night they like have a dinner together like they go on a fake date because there's like rumors that it is a fake marriage and they're trying to convince the public that it is a real marriage because if you're gonna be like if you're a ceo if you're a billionaire you're probably you're a celebrity you know like you are well known you're famous so declan is on the tabloids and his marriage was in the tabloids and they try to show the public iris and declan go on these fake dates to try to show the public that oh what what they are is like a real thing and and throughout the book Declan doesn't show really much or you don't feel that internal conflict of him being super attracted to Iris and Iris like you know that internal conflict that that Declan would feel but him being like no I can't be with her you didn't feel any of that except maybe like a part or two for halfway through the book and then once you hit like the halfway mark they go on this fake date and he's just like I want Iris like, I want to sleep with her, I think, like, we would be good together. And then all of a sudden, he's just, like, flirting with her. For real. We should do it. Like, we should just be together for real. Or, like, we should just, like, hook up and whatever, you know? I was just like, whoa, that came out of nowhere. Like, where was the internal conflict? Like, how was... All of a sudden, he's feeling some type of way. But, like, for half of the book, um, Declan was like everything that I do, all of the like cuddling and being cute, all the looks that I give you, I'm just faking it and I'm just acting, you know, blah, blah, blah. He says that for the beginning and then all of a sudden it just felt so abrupt. Like the switch felt so ab abrupt. For the first book, there was a natural progression of being kind of enemies or like not liking each other for Zara and Rowan to getting to know each other and then liking each other. In the second book with Declan and Iris, I was like, whoa, 
this felt like it came out of nowhere like all of a sudden they liking each other and I do think that the second half of the book of um, Terms and Conditions is the better half like I really really liked after they admitted their feelings to each other and then those different conflicts that they had after that and after like having sex and doing all of that stuff the book picked up its pace and you really felt their relationship more but it took until the halfway part halfway mark to get there and it did feel abrupt like there wasn't a natural progression of doing that just in my opinion so that's why I feel like y'all might hate me for me saying that but yeah that is my opinion sorry I'm editing this right now but I've kind of forgot to add that also I feel like the third act conflict of terms and conditions just really didn't feel super resolved I feel like there were some bigger issues about the relationship because it is like a boss and an assistant relationship and then the solution to it at the very end was was iris quitting like their whole relationship and like the way that declan was to iris and when you read the book like you'll understand what i'm saying like the way he reacted at the end of the book putting his work first before iris all these other component components didn't really feel resolved at the end iris was just kind of like oh i'm gonna quit as if that was just gonna solve every single issue in the relationship and then they like fast forward into the epilogue and I was like, I don't know, I feel like there's something missing here. Like I'm missing a part. But yeah, I just wanted to add that. Like I feel like the third act conflict just was first of all there to just, just to be there, but also it just did not feel really resolved at all. And I feel like there could be some issues within the relationship in the future. I know this is like a not a real couple, but like, yeah. I gave this book, Terms and Conditions, a three out of five stars. And yeah, I just, I needed the longing. I didn't feel any longing in this book. And I was just, it was just like missing something. Like it had all the right parts. It was just lacking in something. But the ending was great. The ending of both of these books, great happily ever afters. I really, really liked though that. But as a whole, so far for this series, I think there is going to be a third one following the third brother. For So far for this whole series, I do give it like a 3.5 out of 5 stars as a whole so far. It's not my favorite, but it's not horrible. Like in the future, in like 10 years down the line, when I totally forget what happened in these books, I would definitely reread. I honestly wish that the third book, I know this probably won't happen, but the third book is going to follow Cal. Oh my god, I looked at it on a good read. So it's going to follow Cal and then a girl named Alana, which sucks because I really, really, I don't know if this is just me and I wish that this could have happened, but I know that it's not. I wish that they could have made Cal like gay or bisexual because he was really giving me those type of vibes. Like, I don't know like what that would mean like oh what kind of vibes are you talking about but i don't know i was just like cal is giving bisexual cal is giving gay vibes i think it was because cal is best friends with iris from the second book you know the marriage convenience one he was best friends with iris and i don't know like the things like the way he empathized with with iris and like was on her side about things and like he was just, I don't know, maybe it was just because he was more empathetic and I always consider men to be trash. <laughs> like in real life, I was like, oh, he cannot be straight because he's a little bit too good to be true, especially like being best friends with Iris and stuff like that. But yeah, I know that Cal is not going to be gay, sadly. And the third book is going to follow Cal and a girl named Alana. And I don't know who Alana is, but we shall find out. I will be reading the third book, but it is going to be coming out. Goodreads doesn't say when it's going to be going to be coming out, but it probably will be sometime next year. So I will keep on the lookout for that. I will make a review on that. But so far, this book series is like a 3.5 out of 5 stars for me. Oh my god! Sorry, I'm going to add one more thing, but look at... I, bought, I really wanted a Squishmallow, but I have to return it because... He's, he's just a little too big, but guess what this is? Isn't this so cute? What the heck? I just bought this the other day at Barnes & Noble. Look at it. It's so cute. It's a If you don't know what this is, <laughs> it's a potato. It's literally a potato. And guess what I named him? His name is Poe. Like potato. So his name's Poe. 
Poe, like Poe Dameron, Poe, like from Kung Fu Panda. But yeah, this is Poe. Okay, anyways, this is some stupid, this is what I freaking spend my money on, like stupid shit like this. But anyways, thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.